Hey everybody, this is Jim Prusak, physical therapist and owner of The Pain PT. And today I want to talk a little bit more about how the brain creates chronic pain. I find this fascinating and this is also a subject that's not talked a lot about when, we, when we're looking at chronic pain. We talk a lot about the periphery, we talk a lot about the body part that's hurting, but we don't really talk about how the brain works in relationship to chronic pain. If you looked at a couple of my other YouTube videos, um, you've learned that there's a lot of research showing that there's certain brain centers that have been shown to be active and are correlated with the production and development of chronic pain. And so if you look here, you'll see all these areas of the brain listed here have a role in pain processing. And in particular, we've found there's certain areas that have a greater role in chronic pain. So we know there's a connection between that nucleus that comes in and prefrontal cortex. And when that connection is present, it can predict the chronification of pain at 85% accuracy. We also know that there's been some shrinkages and weakness in certain parts of the brain that have been associated with chronic pain. And this has been found in the hippocampus as well as the amygdala. Both these areas work more on processing the emotions. And so our pain moves from being a pure sensory experience, which we call nociception, into more of an emotional experience with chronic pain. And that's why the different brain centers, uh, they change as we move from acute to chronic pain. So we have a peripheral nervous system and that connects to our central nervous system. Our central nervous system is our brain and our spinal cord. And that feeds information through these wires, essentially, these peripheral nerves that go to your arms and to your legs. And essentially, it's a two-way street between your brain and your body. So you'll get a message that may come from your leg in this example, and it may run up through your peripheral nerve, through your spinal cord, and up to your brain. And your brain will then send a message back through the same pathway. So we have this two-way street between the brain and the body. And in some cases, like with acute pain, we may have an injury that's in the periphery, let's say our leg in this case, that's going to send what's called a nociceptive signal to the brain. It's a message that something might be wrong there. But it's our brain that decides ultimately what to do with that message. If it decides there's a problem there, then it's going to send back a message of protection. It's going to flip on the part of the nervous system that's there to protect us that's going to make us stop. And this is very good for acute pain so we don't hurt ourselves further. But what happens in chronic pain is that our brains can become sensitized. And why we become sensitized is a subject for another talk. And that can be related to stress. But when you have a sensitized brain, a lot of times it can interpret a message as being dangerous when it's actually not. So when our brain interprets the message as being dangerous when it's not, which a lot of times is chronic pain, then we stay stuck in the pain cycle. The brain can actually send an altered signal from itself into your body that can create pain. And so this is what we call central sensitization. Now this can result from ongoing pain, meaning you've had pain for a long time, and that signal keeps bombarding the brain, and the brain becomes sensitized from a constant signal of pain, or what we call nociception. But in some cases, we actually can have the brain itself being sensitized from the get-go. And this is what we found in some of the other research, is that people had a sensitized brain from the beginning of these studies, not after a year of pain, but from the beginning. And it was the brain that actually caused the pain to become chronic. So we can have this sensitized brain, and this really alters the pain signaling in the body. And it has the potential to cause and create chronic pain by itself. And so this is really called centralization of pain. So hopefully you've learned something here today. Um, this information is hopefully going to help you get out of chronic pain. And we need to look at the keys to getting out of chronic pain. And so if we're going to look to the brain and nervous system for changing pain, we need to look at what the brain does. And that is processing thoughts and beliefs, what we think and feel about pain, 
which is also our emotions, our perceptions, and our behaviors and actions as a result of pain. We also need to look at what stressors might be going on in our life around the time the pain started or currently. And even as far back as childhood, we know from the science that stress has the capacity to change our brains. And so there's a lot to look at when we're looking at chronic pain. But the point I want to get to is that we need to look towards the brain and nervous system instead of just looking at the local tissues. Thank you very much and hope you all have a great day.